creation. The first question for 100 points. How many days did it take God to create the universe according to the book of Genesis? Was it A, one day, B, six days, C, seven days, or D, 100 days? The answer is B. It took God six days to create the universe according to the book of Genesis. The next creation question for 200 points. What did God create on the first day? Was it A, light, B, air, C, sun, moon, and stars, or D, water? The correct answer is A. On the first day, God created light. The next question for 300 points. What covered the earth? Was it A. Plants, B. Animals, C. The ocean, or D. Bubbles? The correct answer is C. The ocean covered the earth. The next question. This one is for 4,001 point. What did God create on the seventh day? Was it A, a man, B, a woman, C, water, or D, nothing, God rested? The answer is D. On the seventh day, God created nothing. God rested. The next question for zero points. What shape did the earth have? A. It had no shape. B. It was square. C. It was round. Or D. A triangle. The answer is A. The earth had no shape. The next question for lots of points. What did God say to create light? Is it A. Bring on the sunshine. B. Here comes the sun. C. Let there be light. Or D. Cease darkness. The answer is C. To create light, God said, let there be light. The next question for 700 points. What else was created on the day that man was created? Was it A. Birds, B. Sea life, C. Land animals, or D. Plants? The answer is C. On the day man was created, land animals were also created. The next question for 10,000 points. What day did God say was very good? Was it A, the first, B, the fourth, C, the fifth, or D, the sixth? The answer is D. God said the sixth day was very good. The next question for five and a half points. Which day of creation was all plant life created? Was it A, the first day, B, the third day, 
C the fifth day or D the second day? The answer is B. All plant life was created on the third day. Now for the last question, worth 1,000 points. What did God give man to eat? Was it A, animals and plants? B, plants and fruit? C, fish and plants? Or D, animals and fish? The answer is B. God gave man plants and fruit to eat. Thanks for playing Bible Trivia. We hope you'll play again soon. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I am Pastor Chris, and I just give God honor, glory, and praise. I hope that you enjoyed today's Bible trivia. I hope you got some right answers, and even if you didn't, you were able to learn something. But right now, I'm excited because it is time to worship God. On this Sunday morning, I come to you live from Love AME Church right here in Largo, Maryland. And I am so excited to connect with each and every one of you on today. And I am just want to let you know that we come to serve a good God, a mighty God, a loving God, a powerful God, a gracious God. Anybody excited about this God? I don't know. I just want to say a couple hellos to some people who I see who are already on here. What's up? You, I, I hear your mic. We're going to try to bring some praise and worship on today. How you doing, Pastor Jenkins? What's up, Sister Sharice? How you doing, Sister Hollingsworth? Uh-oh, Sister Sunita coming with those right answers. I see you now. How you doing, Sister Tracy? Good morning. Good morning. Brother Williams, good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Brother Ann, I see you on here. Sister Demetria, how you doing? What's up, Sister Kareen? How was, how was Sunday school, everybody? How you doing, Sister Pam Wilson Ross? What's up, Sister Leslie? How you doing, Sister Pitts? Are y'all ready to worship? Oh, y'all hit the love button or the like button if y'all are ready to go ahead and worship God. Uh-huh. How you doing, big bro? Glad to have you on here today. All I know is that I'm believing in faith. Somebody say amen. That God is going to have his way. How you doing, Sister, Sister Wright? I don't know about you, but I'm excited for what our God is going to do. How you know, Sister Queen? I don't know, but I know our God is a mighty God. And because our God is so mighty, I just want to go to God in praise. So right now, come on, come on, come on, come on, believers. Come on, believers. Is anybody ready to worship? Anybody ready to worship? How you doing, Minister John? Anybody ready to give God honor, glory, and praise? If you're ready to worship God, just get your heart right. Get your heart right, but make a decision even right now that you're not going to let any distractions come in your way. See, when you used to come in the church, it was real clear to you that you weren't going to be distracted. One of the challenges through virtual worship is that we can get distracted. But I'm going to ask you to be focused on today because I believe that somebody is standing in the need of a breakthrough. Somebody needs a word from God. Somebody needs a word from on high. And if that is you and you know you need a word from God, it's all right. It's all right to praise him. It's all right to glorify him because we serve this mighty God and our God is still yet here with us. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Somebody give God honor, glory, and praise. Why? Because he's a good, good God. And I don't know about you, but the God that I serve will not, cannot, <laughs> ever fail. So if y'all are ready for worship, hit the like button, hit the love button, tag a friend, share the post. But right now, I'm going to call on uh, Sister Minister Angela, I'm going to call on none other than agape praise to lead us higher higher in worship agape praise take us higher
church. How many of us believe that we serve a great God, a mighty God, a strong God? And that's not just now. That is forever. Come on, lift this up with us. Let's go. Great God, great God. Oh. You are great. Great God, great God, oh, you are great forever. Great God, great God, oh, you are great forever. Oh, great God, great God, oh, you are Come great. On. Oh, 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 oh,
answer when the doctor said no. You said yes, sir. Said I could have been. Good morning, good morning, love agents. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let us go before the throne, his throne, in grace and prayer. Lord God, we come humbly before you on this day, Lord. We thank you for just being Lord all by yourself, Lord. Lord, have your way in this service right now, Lord. Do what it is you want to do with us, in us, and through us, Lord. We pray right now that you touch our pastor, Lord. May you touch him, fill him up from the bottom of his feet to the crown of his head, Lord. We pray for the first family, Lord. We pray for his family that you continue to touch them, Lord. Lord, we ask that your guidance, that you'll be a lamp into the way that you want us to go in this service, Lord. Touch people in homes right now, Lord. Touch them right there at their moment of need, Lord. Do as your word says you would do, Lord. You'll always be with us. You'll always be beside us. You'll never leave us and you'll never forsake us. And we thank you on the day. It's by your will and your way. And you get the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, we seal this prayer. Let the love agents and anyone in the sound of my voice say amen and amen again. Here are your This Week at Love announcements. Believer's Bible Study. Watch it on Facebook Live every Thursday at 7 p.m. 
Boss Life Bible Study. You don't want to miss this. Join us every Wednesday at 12 noon via Facebook Live for a powerful lunch and learn spiritual message, daily inspiration. Text Love AME to 545454. That's three five fours to receive the daily inspirational text. Path classes. Have you joined Love AME? And if so, and you haven't taken your three path classes, please email lovepathclass at gmail.com and indicate which classes you need to complete. We have First Step 101, Next Step 201, and Big Step 301. Please indicate which classes you need to complete in your email. All right, love agents, we have some upcoming events and I'm super excited about it in this 2022. Join us every Sunday at 9 a.m. to 9.50 a.m. for a Spirit-filled Sunday School lesson. The hospitality team is looking for new members. If you are interested in joining this ministry, please contact Sister Keisha for more details. The OSL continues the movement to end hunger. Volunteers are needed to help with Operation Spread Love, feeding the surrounding communities. Be a blessing. To donate any amount to this ministry, visit www.loveamechurch.org backslash give or to volunteer, email loveamestewards at gmail.com. The prayers of the righteous availeth much. Join us on January the 24th at 7.30 a.m. for a prayer of renewal. Foundational Scripture, Romans 12, 2. Love agents, selfless living is the art of giving, and God loves a cheerful giver. For your convenience, here are your online giving options. Parents, 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 need a little time? Your kids will love you for this one. Join Love Kids Game Night every first Friday from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. for ages 6 to 12. Ladies, let's get ready for 2022 Women's Discipleship Classes. We are expanding our capacity to receive all that God has for us. More details coming soon. Be ready. Those are your announcements for today. I'm Minister Angelina. Be blessed, healed, and filled with the radiant light of God. I dare you to trust God. Saints, if you had a birthday this week or last week, type, it's my birthday. We have a special greeting for you. God is love and love is real. Saints, if you had an anniversary this week or last week, type it's my anniversary and include the years that you are celebrating. We have a special greeting just for you. Happy anniversary. time that we'd like to welcome all of our visitors to the love zone if this is your first time worshiping with us please type first time and welcome to the love zone
Our scripture reading on this morning comes out of the book of Psalms, chapter 121, verses 7 through 8. I will be reading from the NIV version of the Bible. Once again, that is Psalms, chapter 121, verses 7 and 8. It reads as, the Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. The word of God for the people of God. Saints, it's time to give. We want to thank God for all that he continues to do for us. In season and out of season, God has been good to us. I pray that you would open your heart and allow the Holy Spirit to lead you in your giving for the upbuilding of the kingdom today. For your convenience, there are several ways for you to safely and securely give. You may go to loveamechurch.org slash give and click online giving. You may donate through the Easy Tide app by searching Love AME Church. You may also text to give. Indicate your dollar amount in the body of a text and send to 301-485-5683. You may donate via Cash App at dollar sign Love AME. Lastly, you may mail your contribution to 1450 Mercantile Lane, Suite 211, Largo, Maryland, 20774. And may God richly bless you during these challenging times. Gracious, wonderful, and magnificent Lord, we come to you on today thanking you, Lord. We thank you for the ones that had the obedience to tithe, Lord. And we pray also for the ones that did not have the tithe, Lord. We're praying that you touch their resources, Lord, and that next week they can show their obedience by giving a tithe, Lord. And we can say, look at what the Lord has done, Lord. Lord, we pray that everything received will be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom. It's in the matchless name of Jesus we seal this prayer. Let the saints say amen. We can 
Father. Say, let the glory of the glory of the Lord rise and plant the earth. Let the glory of the Lord rise and plant the earth. Let the praises of us. grace abounds the deepest waters and your sovereign hand will be my guide where feet may fail and fear surrounds me God you've never failed and you won't stun now so Come on and do what? Keep my eyes above the waves. When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. For 
I am what? For I am yours. And you are mine. And you hey. are mine. So Let me walk upon the water wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without border. Let me walk upon. And my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead Woo! me when my trust is with the Let me walk upon the water, walk upon my the water wherever water. you would come. So take me, me deeper than take my me feet deeper could ever than my wander. Feet could ever and my faith wander. will be made stronger. And my faith will be made stronger. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I don't know about you, but spirit lead me. Spirit guide me. Spirit direct me. Spirit have your will. Spirit have your way. On this Sunday, I pray that everything I say, everything I do will be wrapped in you and wrapped in your will. Spirit lead me. Lead me to the water. The water. 
that I may be able to drink of your water that I won't thirst again lead me and let me be like a plant like a tree planted by the rivers of water that my leaf shall never be found missing and it will always be green green as my sweater that I wear help me oh God to be anchored in you to be close to you that I always seek you oh God help me always to put you first help me always to put you before me and to chase after you oh God and to chase after your will spirit lead me and as long as I can pour out as long as I have anything in me oh God help me to pour out that which you pour in oh God I, I thank you that the, the tree is planted by the river for a reason that it would be able to tap into you and the spirit is the water because biblically water is spirit but I understand that the reason that the tree is nourished and well nourished by the river because it seeks you oh God but I understand oh God that there's a purpose in the tree and that the tree ought to produce some fruit in season out of season and so God in this season I just ask that you would use me that I might bear some fruit good God almighty Help me to bear some fruit, oh Lord. Help us to bear some fruit, oh Lord. I see some folks on here. Help them to bear some fruit. Help Sister Lisa and Brother McCoy and Pastor Jenkins and Sister Jones and Sister Ross and Sister Wiggleton and, and good God, Sister Johnson and Minister Vieira and help them all to bear some fruit. Help us to have some evidence some evidence of the Spirit of God in our lives. Help us to have some evidence as love agents, oh God, that people might look and see and glorify our Father who is in heaven. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen, amen, and amen. I, I'm excited on this Sunday morning. My God, I'm excited on this Sunday morning. I, do have a text I want to read. It's actually a couple, a couple texts I want to read for you. First John 4 and 8. Whoever does not love does not know God. Because God is love. Oh, did y'all catch that? Whoever does not love does not know God. Because God is love. John 13, 35. By this, matter of fact, I'm going to start at verse 34. John 13, 34 and 35. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. If you love one another my God my God my God that's John 13 34 through 35 but then I want to read to you a few more verses found in 1 Corinthians 13 verses 4 through 7 and I'll skip down to 13 1 Corinthians 13 verses 4 through 7 and verse 13 love is patient love is kind it does not envy it does not boast it is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records, no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects always trust, always hopes, and always perseveres. 
in, in verse 13. And now these three remain. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. On today, I want to share with you from the topic, love proof. Love proof. Somebody say love proof. Dear Father God, have your will and have your way. Use me to your honor and your glory and praise. In Jesus' mighty and magnificent name, help Chris get all the way out of the way. The people don't need to hear from me. They need to hear from the Holy Spirit. They need to hear a word from on high. They need, good God Almighty, an experience with you, oh God. A life-changing experience. And I'm believing that you're going to do just that on today. And for those that don't know you as Lord and Savior, we're believing in faith that on today, oh God, that they come and they cry out, what must I do to be saved? And we believe in faith that they will pray a prayer of salvation on today, oh God. And we thank you for those that are the saints and how they'll be equipped, oh God. But dear Lord, we thank you for those that need a church and they'll get anchored on this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And so, you all know that we are in 2022 and we have a theme of keep on striving. Keep on striving. And, and we were able to break down from New Year's Eve uh, through the past couple of weeks what we need to understand and that striving is not a bad thing when it's done in the way that God has so designed for us to do it. Uh, we're not supposed to be striving about stuff and uh, we're not supposed to be striving about positions. We're not supposed to be uh, 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 striving for status and all these things that really don't matter. We're supposed to be striving after God and after what it is that God so desires of us, the godly thing. And so that's why we don't have to have a wrestle of, oh, well, do I love God or do I love my wife? Oh, well, God wants you to love your wife. So that's part of your striving, right? And so you got to understand, do I, do I, well, do I, uh, my kids want X, Y, Z. So do I love God or I love my kids? Fool, don't you know that you're supposed to love your kids and the Bible instructs us to do so? You got to understand that that's what God has called us to. And I'm sorry I said fool. I'm sorry I said fool, you know. But uh, what I want you to do is I want you to catch it. But here's the thing I want y'all to look at. We dealt with loving God. And I, I, I had one week plan for that. One week plan for that. But if y'all remember on second Sunday, God disrupted my plan. And God said, no, I need you to teach more on loving me, talking about God, right, on loving God. And, and, and so we had an extra week where we talked about loving God. And then on last week, we were able to deal with the, the, the topic of I'm going to love me. Right. And, and we had, I don't know how many of y'all did your assignment. If y'all did your assignment, uh, 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 just 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 put yes, put yes, put yes. in there. the assignment was to go home and or go wherever you are, get in the mirror and say to yourself, I'm going to love me. And I, I would dare say you might need to say that more often than just that one Sunday. Amen. But if you did the assignment, just say amen or say yes, yes, yes. Because guess what? This power. Good God Almighty, good God Almighty. A uh, Pastor Jenkins, I overheard some of her lessons. She was like, when you can understand the power of when authorities are in place and you can be obedient to the authority that is there. And when you're able to follow the authority, God will put people in place, put a shepherd in place. But if you can't even listen to the shepherd, how are you going to listen to God? How are you going to listen to God when the, the, the pastor, uh, 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 and maybe you're a member here or maybe you're a member somewhere else, but your pastor will give you what God gave for the sheep, but you won't even receive it. You won't even act on it. You won't even listen on it. You're too good to say, uh-huh. You, you, you won't go there. But the reality is there's blessings in the following. There's, and guess what? You want your kids to be obedient, but you're not obedient. Oh, come on, come on, come on. You're not obedient to God. You're not obedient to any authority. And if you live lawless, good God, they're going to mirror lawlessness. Your children are going to be a reflection of what you do. Amen? 
All right, let's keep on walking. Let's keep on working. There's much work to be done on today. Amen. I wish I had a lot of time. I'm not going to be with us too long. We're gonna, I'm not going to be with us too long because after the day, I've got to go ahead. And you know what? As a pastor, one of the things you understand is that you got to ex- let your love pour out, right? And so, therefore, I had a loved one, a, 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 a fellow pastor, and, and they've been dealing with much pain. They've been dealing with much hurt. And I had a lot on my schedule. I mean, my, my stuff has been packed. I've been dealing with so much. But when I heard what was going on in their lives, how three of their best friends all died within one month. I said, you know what? Ain't no way that she can preach on Sunday. And so I have to preach another service immediately following this one. I mean, I don't think I have uh, two seconds. The good thing is I don't have to go anywhere. But as soon as I finish this one, I'm going to be preaching at Zion City of Truth. Amen. On Zoom. Amen. But what I want y'all to catch is this. I want it to move forward with loving your neighbor, but in doing that, we got to talk about love some, y'all. Because in order to love our neighbors, then we ought to exhibit some love. And how do I know? I know because I'm able to look at the 34th verse of the 13th chapter of John. And it says, a new command I give you, Love one another. Good God Almighty. Catch this. Jesus is saying, I got a brand new command for you, but he's telling them the same thing. So the first thing you got to do is make sure you listen. Make sure you listen. The first point is make sure you listen. And why is that? Here we are, and we got to understand that if the disciples would be retold what God has already told them time and time again, then there's something that we need to understand is that we must listen. We have to listen. We have to listen to what it is that Jesus has said to us in the word of God. And we're able to see right here in the 34th, a new command I give you, love one another. So therefore, God expects us to strive to love our community because other people make up our community. A community is nothing if it's just houses. That's just a bunch of houses. That's a housing development. See, we can get confused. We can get it twisted. We can get it all wrong when we look at the stuff as the community. Community is not the buildings. Community is not that stuff. The people are the heart of any community. What do you mean? I mean the rich people, the poor people. I, I mean the black people, the white people. I mean, uh, what you talking about? I'm talking about the old people and the young people. I, I'm talking about the people in good health and the people in bad health. We are the community. The Christians and the Muslims and the Hindus and my God, the, the Baha'i faith and the people that have all these different belief systems, the atheists, all of us, we're still in community together. We are the community. And so how, good God Almighty. And so, so we got to look at that. We're able to see, he said, I give you love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. First point is you got to what? Listen. You got to listen at what Jesus is saying, and you got to take some time to really dig into the fact that Jesus is speaking right here, and he says, a new command I give, I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. My God, how many times did he had to bring love into one sentence? He needed to bring it in three times. Love everybody. Like I sort of loved you, I need you to love everybody. Y'all catching this? It's sort of like Jesus had to slow this train down. And sometimes we get so busy, we get so active that we can't pay attention to what's really going on. You know, sometimes I've been out there and, you know, I'm running, I'm doing this and I'm trying to knock this out and knock that out. And maybe my wife or maybe my children, my son or my daughter, they said something to me, but I'm so busy. And what has to happen is I have to slow down because I might miss something in the midst of it all. Amen. It's all right. Say amen first lady. It's all right. I know you want to say amen. But but what will happen? is if we go ahead and follow what it is that God tells us if we'll go and do what God is instructing us and we'll take the time to listen then we might get it Uh uh-huh catch it catch it catch it he didn't say it once he he broke it down and gave an example so Jesus said love one another in just case you don't know how the way I loved you 
And, and when you think about that, now that you're thinking about how I've loved you, you know, when I got you from when you wasn't doing nothing, when I, when I snatched you, uh, you was the tax collector and the tax collector, and you, you had to change your whole life because, you know, you weren't number to center. You know, when you were in the middle of your mess and, you know, everybody was broke, busted, and disc- when, when I grabbed you right in the midst of your sin, or when the, the people were taking advantage of you and I lifted you out of that, when I snatched you out of the gates of hell. And for those of you that grew up in the church, but, the, but, but guess what? You was the biggest gossiper ever. I was the one that gave you a better reputation because I was able to clean your mouth up. Anybody know where I'm talking? Anybody, anybody hear this? Anybody hear this? It's, you know, wake up, wake up, check it out, check it out, because this is for us. You notice I said us, not you. Because, see, the Bible, <laughs> the preacher got to preach to his own self, too, right? I got to preach to my own self. Because if I can't only preach to you, but I can't preach to myself, then what am I doing? I'm lying. I got to eat the same meal. But the good thing about eating the right meal, if you've listened to God, if you've listened to what he's instructed and you've paid attention, then if you got to eat your words and you spoke the word of God, oh, you got to chew a good meal coming up. So once you learn, the first thing is that you got to listen. The next thing you got to understand is that you got to do it. Uh, See, this is where the heavy lifting comes in, right? This is where you're going to have to bust a sweat. This is where you might tear your clothes. This is where you might lose a couple things along the way because in loving other people, sometimes you're going to go through some stuff. Why you think in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4 through 7, it says love is patient. Why did love have to be patient? Because God knew to really exhibit love, you got to be patient. How do I know that love is patient? Because when we look at verse 34 in, in John 13, we're able to understand that here it is. Jesus is working with the same disciples that he's been working with for a few years. He's been working with these here disciples Right. They've been walking with him. They've been talking with him. They've been eat. I mean, literally, they were together all the time, breaking bread, the whole nine yards. But he said, listen, listen, let me, I got something for you. I got something. Come on. Come on. Get everybody. Get, y'all, y'all come on over here. I got something I got to break down to you. Y'all got to love one another. The way and, and maybe y'all not getting it. So I just want to make it clear. The way I've loved you, that's the type of love I'm talking about. When we go to 1 John 4, 8, it says, whoever does not love does not know God because God is loving. Many of us say we uh, love God. Many of us say we know God. But how are you going to know God when love is absent from your life? How are you going to say you're walking in the kingdom, but can't nobody see the kingdom in you? Good God Almighty. How are you going to say that you sold out for Jesus, but when your mouth opened, my God, everybody better get behind the shield in some sort of protection. And then if you look at them, you're going to cut them with your eyes. You know, we got to be a place that really loves other people. And so love must be patient. Because if we consider the patience of God with us, ooh. If I just look back over my life and look at all the times I said, God, if you, you know, God, if you, God, if you, anybody ever had the God, if your prayers when you starting out in the job, <laughs> you know, when I started praying, I used to have the God, if you, the God, if you, God, if you help me out of this, I'm going to do X, Y, Z. What you need to try to make a deal with God for? Just do what God asks you and you won't have to worry about making no deals. We're going to have to graduate from the God, if you. You know, it's a case. It's a, I don't know. There might be a syndrome. The God if you. You know, I don't know. To prescribe a prescription for the God if you. First thing is listen. Next thing you're going to have to do it. What do you got to do? You need to understand that love is actually kind. My God. That means it's the opposite of being unkind. Well, how does one practice kindness? Uh, and some will say, well, you know, this is just how I am. Well, if how you are is unkind, then you're ungodly and you need to go ahead and put some love in there and learn to be kind. If, if you've never been kind before, guess what? You got a brand new day in store and you can practice some kindness. 
Uh, you could practice having some nice uh, manners and treating people well. You can have some kindness that you can exhibit to somebody beyond just yourself. You could be kind to your neighbor. You could be kind to your friend. You could be kind to your family. You could be kind to your children. You could be kind to your spouse. You could be kind to your parents or children or cousins or family. You could be kind to your neighbors. You could be kind to your co-workers. You could be kind to your employees or your supervisor. You could be kind to the customers, my God. But you could be kind to the people in the store where you go to, my God. You could be kind to the person that got to clean up after you wherever you work. You could be kind wherever. You could be kind on the train. You could be kind when you're on an airplane, my God. We would have probably had a thousand less people locked up if they could have just been kind. We could be kind by putting a mask on when we all around somebody. Come on now. We could be kind by thinking about somebody else and not just our own selves. Uh, what do, and so, so when I, I skipped over the first Corinthians. You know, normally I just like to deal with a text, but God had me to show you a few things. And so, uh, and as we deal with doing it, I wanted to show you some examples of doing it, right? So, so, so we first we got to listen, then we got to do it. But if we're going to do it, we need to understand there's some key ingredients in doing it. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. See, if you are hating on your neighbor and hating on your friend because they got a spouse you want, they got a job you want, they got a car you want, a truck you want, clothes you want, house you want, money you want, uh-huh, all that stuff, <laughs> physique you want, come on. If you hating on them, you got to ask yourself, are you loving your neighbor? Because he love doesn't envy. And then when you get a little something, come on now, y'all know y'all get a little something. Everybody, you know, everybody got their day. Everybody has their day. Everybody has their day where they're going to get a little something. Everybody has their day where something's going to come their way and they're going to be like, yep, I got me a little something. And so what I want you to know is that uh, when you will follow what it is that God has for you, you got to be able to be blessed by God, but still be in order. Woo, what you talking about? I mean, when you get your opportunity, when your time is called, when your number is called, your name is called, and you get your opportunity, don't be so big-headed that can't nobody want to be around you, and there's no space for you in the building, because when you walk in, your ego comes in the building before you even get to walk in the door. Don't be that one that your ego is so big. Yeah, I know you got a title. I know you run this. I know you in charge of that. I got it. I got it. I know what your zip code is. I I know you got, you're a big ball of shot caller. I know you're a boss. I, I know you run this stuff. I know you got it going on. you the best thing since sliced bread. I don't know about you. You could grab a bag of chips to this, but I need you to know that if you are just have a life filled with boasting, you already got yours. <laughs> But see, what I want to do, I want to have what God has for me later. I, I'm glad that God will bless me now, but I don't have to put it in everybody's face. I, I don't know about you. I don't have to tell everybody what God is doing in my life. I, you don't have to know how God hooked me up. You don't have to know all the things that have came my way. You don't have to know all the things that God has done for me, my God. When I look back over my life, I can realize that God has blessed me in so many ways. But the one thing he showed me is that sometimes you don't need to let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. And when the right hand is getting blessed, you don't got to be bragging about it. <laughs> See, there's a way that some of y'all even tested, my God. Your testimonies ain't really about God, it's about you. You know, there's a way of telling a testimony. Like, say for instance, you got the new crib. And you know that you went through so much in order to get it. But all you want to talk about, yeah, I got this new crib. It is fabulous. It's wonderful. I mean, it got the latest this, the latest that. But you ain't said nothing about the God 
They got you there. You haven't said nothing about, and my credit was jacked up, but God helped me get it right, and I didn't know which way I was going to go, but God opened up a door for me and showed me that, you know what, I'm still going to give you what you asked for. I, I know you wanted this. I know you was going to, you was believing God for it, but guess what? I'm giving it to you, and I'm the one that is the doer. I am the way maker. I'm the one that opens the door, and I'm the one that closed the door of those things that weren't going to be good for you because you couldn't see behind the walls. You couldn't see what was in that engine. You couldn't see what was wrong with the clothes that you wanted to order. You couldn't see what was wrong with the trip you wanted to go on. You couldn't see it, but I did, and I protected you. So even in our testimonies, and this is not a call to stop giving your testimony. We need to give more testimonies. We need to brag on God, not on us. We need to talk about the goodness of the Lord. And that right there, my friends, is powerful. It's not proud. It does not dishonor others. It ain't putting nobody down. It's not self-seeking. It's not looking to be lifted up and pushed so that you can look down on somebody else. Come on now. It's not easily angered. You ain't going to make it trip, right? I, I like, I like my, uh, I, I love my brother-in-law. My brother-in-law, Ken. Brother Ken. Brother Ken. You know, he's a, one, of, one of the main reasons we're in this space for right now because he, he, he put himself on the line so that the church could come and we needed someone, uh, to, someone to be a guarantor. He said, I'll do it. That the church would have a space, amen? And, and it couldn't be me. I was going to do it, but they wouldn't let me do it. But he stu stood up and he did it. Catch this though. One of the things I like about him is he's the calmest you'll ever meet. He's a Marine, ex-Marine, but he's the calmest you'll ever meet. You'll ever come around and, and people will be acting a complete fool. And one thing he says, like, ain't nobody shooting at you. <laughs> <laughs> Being a Marine, he's like, ain't nobody shooting at you. So, uh, in other words, I'm not about to die. This thing ain't about to take you out. Come on, calm down. You, I, if I go on Facebook, it's, it's filled with these reels now and these reels, and it's about all these people blowing up in all these situations. Chill out. I mean, the ridiculousness that I watch that takes place in fast food and in restaurants and people behind counters, and like, come on, give it a break. The reality is we need to calm down. But catch this one. And this, this is a good one for relationships. This is a good one for relationships. Not only is it not easily angered, <clears throat> it keeps no record of wrongs. So I don't know, you know, like for my messages, right, I got the note section. I got my note section, right? I got my note section on my iPhone, right? But uh, and in there, I'll put different stuff in my notes. You better not have no uh, a, a section in your iPhone or your Android. I don't know if Androids are capable of holding that type of stuff. But it, it, you, you, you know, I always, always got to slide an Android joke in sometimes. But the whole point is, don't have a record of what other people did wrong. We talked about that on last week when we talked about one of the challenges with you loving other people, but you, you, you got to get ready to forgive your own self of your stuff because you'll always look back at other people's stuff and the reason you do it, you haven't yet forgiven yourself. We got to make space and if you're going to forgive somebody, then you need to forgive somebody. If we're going to follow God, then we got to remember what God does. Now, now, it's one thing if you forgive somebody and they do the same thing every single day. At some point, you do have to take some notice like this is what they do and they don't change. Right. And, and, and they're showing me who they are. But if that ain't happened since if, 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 the, if your situations happen then and you've seen a clear difference over a period of time, at some point, you got to realize what God said. You can't keep a record of wrong and hold people. Uh, you know, one of the biggest challenges that happen in many relationships, it could, be, it could be a group of guys, all friends, but one person did something back in 85 or in 95 or whenever it was, and they never release people and they hold on to all this stuff. And at some point, you got to let people go, let people be free. If you ain't, you got to figure that thing out. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. You're not going to be excited in bad stuff. You're not going to be excited in somebody falling. You're not going to be excited in somebody's pain. That ain't love. But you're going to rejoice with the truth. See, the truth 
You're not going to be upset with the truth because you understand the truth sets us all free. The truth is a great equalizer because when it's out, it's out. It is what it is. It clears the air. Any pressure that you were carrying is gone. You don't have to carry it, right? You could be free, right? It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. You're able to get this picture of what love looks like. You got to go do that. But I want to catch this. I want you to understand that the reason he needs you to listen up, the reason he needs you to go and do it, is for the third thing that you can go and show it. <laughs> go and show what? What you mean go and show it? When we go back to John 13, 35, it says, by this, Everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. See, God is trying to put a mark on us. God is trying to declare for these are mine. These are my witnesses in the earth. These are my disciples. And we got to walk in what it is that God has for us. But the only way we do it, we got to hold up the bloodstained banner of the Lord. We got to be willing to be in situations that would make us impatient, but be patient anyhow. We got to be willing. To not hold records of wrongs against people. We got to be willing to go ahead and show some proof. See, love, proof, love has proof and the proof is in the pudding. What is the pudding? The pudding out. <laughs> you thought I was talking about the jello pudding. No, I'm talking about the putting out of what God has already shown us. Doing what God has told us to do. And loving somebody else. And loving somebody when it's inconvenient. And loving somebody with the best of our abilities. Pulling up our sleeves and making it happen. Loving somebody in the same way that God loved us. I don't know about you, but love ought to show some proof. Love ought to show some proof when you go to work. If everybody acts crazy, they ought to be able to see your God's disciple love ought to show some proof when you're in a household and it gets a little chaotic love ought to show some proof love ought to show some proof when you're out in the work industry love ought to show some proof when you're out here in these streets in the grocery store or in the clothing store love ought to show some proof by the way that you serve by the way that you talk by the way that you communicate the way that you love somebody else love ought to show some proof but let me tell you this. There's somebody it's hard for you to show proof because you've never experienced that love. And for you, it's time for you to make a decision to accept Jesus as your personal Lord, to accept Jesus as your Savior. Jesus is Lord of all. And he has so much love for you. He loves you. Like nobody you ever met has loved you. He loves you more than your mother, your father, more than your grandparents, more than your neighbors, more than the strangers. Jesus loves you most. And right now, I believe that he's calling you to make a decision to accept him as your personal Lord and Savior of your life. If you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you've never accepted him, you can do it right now. You can do it right now. Just pray with me. Pray with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. Forgive me of my sins. Help me to live your way and not my own. I know now I'm saved in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. If you just prayed that prayer, just type, I did it. If that was your first time praying the prayer for salvation, just type, I did it. Type, I did it. Type, I did it. Type, I did it. If that was your first time, my God, I hope we have some people that sent the, sent the service out because I already know that the lost are all around us. You ought to invite some good God Almighty, some people that need to know God every single week because what happened is their lives will change in the same way God has changed our lives. Maybe you'll watch later, I don't know, but make the decision just to accept Jesus. There's another that you've been in the church, you, but, and, and you've been saved. You are saved. But for whatever reason, you walked away from God. You got mad at God, uh, or, or you got too busy for God, or things were going so swell, or things ended up going so bad that you just sort of, you and God haven't been so good. But you know now 
you got to get right. You got to recommit. And if that's you, just pray with me to recommit your faith. Dear Father God, on today, I recommit my faith. Forgive me of my sins. Help me to follow you, O oh God. To worship you, O oh God. To pray to you, O oh God. To put no one before you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If that was you, just type I'm back, type I'm back. And we just give God the honor, the glory, and the praise. But last and not least, there's somebody that needs a church home. You're like, well, why do we need a church home? And he said, uh, see, every person's been given a measure of faith. But how does faith grow? By hearing and hearing the word of God. And we don't forsake the fellowship of the believers. That means God put some faith in you, but you need to be in regular worship that you would grow in the body of Christ is not to be, uh, not to, not to be ignored. And so you're not supposed to forsake the fellowship. And you need a place where you're learning, where you're growing, where you're serving, and where you're covered. Where you're learning and where you're growing, where you're serving and where you're covered. If you need a place right now on this Sunday morning, where you need a place where you can learn more about God's word, where you can grow in your faith, you can mature in your faith, where you can serve in the house of God, and where you'll be covered. You'll have a pastor in the church family praying for you. If that's you right now, if that's you right now, just type sign me up. Type sign me up. I'm not a perfect pastor. We're not a perfect church. I am a loving pastor. We are a loving church. And I want to let you know that there is no perfect church, but there is a perfect God. And he is on the throne here. He is the one in charge. He is the one in whom we follow. And he is the one that would allow when you come and you join this church, Love AME Church, he'll allow you to make our church better and stronger just because you join. But love is a reciprocal thing. And he'll reciprocate that. And your life will be better and your life will be stronger too. If you want to join this church, just type sign me up. Put sign me up right in the comments right now. Put sign me up. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Put sign me up right in the comments right now. Hallelujah. You know God has been speaking to you. Come on, come on, come on, come on. It's time is up. Time is up. Time. God has been talking to you long enough. What is your decision going to be? Will you listen to what God is speaking to you? If God has been pricking your heart, yeah, I know, I know, I know. I hear all the objections, but salvation is here today. Rededication is here today. And my God, connection with this church is here today with this great church. Connection is time for you is here. For salvation, just type, I did it. For To come back to God, type, I'm back. And, and to join this church, type, sign me up. And we just praise God for whatever your decision is. We give God honor. We give God glory. And we give God praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you for hearing our humble cry. Thank you, God, for moving beyond what we can think, what we can ask or even imagine, oh God. Have your willing way. Save God, for God. Set free God. Deliver God. Anchor God in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Let us have a closing word of prayer and our benediction. And I remember I got to get ready to go preach. I got about 10 minutes before I have to get ready to preach a sermon. Y'all pray for me. But I just want to pray with each and every one of you before, before we close out. I want to pray with you. Amen. I thank God. I thank God. I thank God for each and every one of you. And I know that we serve a good God, a mighty God, and a loving God. And I just want to pray that even right now that God would touch you in a mighty and a magnificent way. That God would be with you and empower you. That God would strengthen you. And that God would help you. Because none of us are perfect and we all make mistakes. But we can't rest in that place. We can't rest in a, oh I know I'm not perfect. None of us are. But we got to continuously get back up and try again. Get back up and love again. Get back up and love somebody else. And remember how God loved us. Remember how God charged us to love one another. And as he loved us to love somebody else. And remember, we got to go do it. And we got to remember that love is patient. Get him another chance. Your kids are trying to, 
trying to figure it out, give him another chance. I know your brother or your sister let you down. Give him another chance. I know they sometimes get on your last, last, last nerve, but give them another chance. And for some people, it doesn't mean that you go into an abusive relationship. We're not talking about abusive relationships because none of us should have to be in an abusive situation. Amen. Because see, abuse is not love. Right. So that's not that. Oh, I beat you up today and uh, forgive me tomorrow. And, and so I can beat you up the next day. No, 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 no. Remember, whatever goes on, whether someone talked about us, but they've demonstrated over a period of time, they've proved themselves through a season. See, the one challenge is trust must be regained, but it should not take a lifetime. If someone has shown you they've shown themselves to be faithful and to be loving then go ahead and release the anger release the hate learn to love I thank you all for being on here let us pray dear father God have your will have your way bless and bless indeed help us to truly be love agents loving others oh father God in the way that you loved us that does not mean that we put ourselves in harm's way but it does mean dear father God that we can love the way you love because you don't walk around and put a weight over top of our heads every day about what we didn't do on yesterday you freed us up help us to free some other people up help them to give uh, another chance oh father God help us also to operate in wisdom but dear Lord Help us as we do this, that people will see that we're yours. And because we're yours, that we would have lifted our father up, that you would draw all men, women, boys, and girls, that they would come to know you as Lord and Savior. We give your name, honor, glory, and praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Before I give you my last little thing, I do want to say hello to a few of you who I see on here right now. How you doing, Minister John? How's it going, Sister Ross? How you doing, Sister Pitts? How you doing, Sister Erica and Sister Shirley and Sister Lynette? How you doing? I see y'all on here. Glad to have each and every one of you on here on today. I give God. How you doing, Reverend Dr. Poe Ray? How you doing, Sister Cheryl? Glad to have each and every. How you doing, Sister Sharice and Sister Sunita and Sister Patty? God, God bless you all. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, Sister, Sister Pelham. God bless you all. God bless you, Sister Leslie. I just hope that y'all have a tremendous week. And just know from the bottom of my heart, I love you. We love you. But God loves you most. Now may the love of God and the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with us until we come again. Amen, amen, and amen. by now they'd fall but you have never failed me waiting for a change to come knowing the bad old one still you have never Fill me in. No. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faith.